Hello everyone, my name is Benjamin Sear and I'm a PhD student at the University of Michigan. I'm here to talk to you today about why lasers inject perceived sound into MEMS microphones. In our previous work of Light Commands, we investigated a cybersecurity attack on voice controllable systems. In this attack, we injected audio signals into voice controllable systems using lasers. This was done silently and at long range. As you can see in this demo video, we're actually firing a laser from one building into another through a window and activating a Google Home, which responds as if it had just heard an audible voice command. This was a major concern in the security community as this threat model was never even considered when thinking about these systems. Now the way light commands works is because amplitude modulated light that enters the acoustic port of a MEMS microphone actually generates an electrical signal on the output. And this, when the attacker laser signal is in the audio frequency range, actually it causes an auto, it causes the electrical signal to look like an audio signal. And this can and this can be done silently and from long distance. This is since this is a hardware level vulnerability, it is difficult to fix with a software update. And so we were thinking about how we can uh, work on future MEMS devices that are actually resistant to this type of attack. But the problem is, after some discussion with the manufacturers and some of our preliminary experiments, it was still unclear as to which transaction mechanisms are being exploited. So that was the motivation of this work, to show what factors make these attacks more effective, to understand which devices are most vulnerable, and to design efficient defenses for future devices, we need to understand the physical causality of this attack, which transaction mechanisms are being exploited. And beyond this, once these effects are understood, there may be potential MEMS applications uh, in using these effects. So that is how we arrive at this research question. Which transaction mechanisms are converting a light signal into an electrical signal? And from this work, while we're not fully describing the mechanisms, we do narrow it down. And that's the primary contribution. Our experiments indicate that photoacoustic effects are the dominant factor in light signal injection into MEMS microphones. So first, just an overview of some of the transduction mechanisms. Now, the major one that has been ex uh, major transduction mechanism that has ex been exploited in re in previous light signal injection works is actually exploiting the photoelectric effect. And in this case, this would be on the application specific integrated circuit or ASIC of the microphone. In this effect, reverse bias PN junctions are very sensitive to light, where light will actually generate charge carriers uh, within the junction, which can create a photocurrent. And this photocurrent can mess with the electrical signal on the output. Now, notice that in um, this microphone and pretty much all the microphones that we looked at, a light blocking epoxy had been dispensed over the ASIC, indicating that photoelectric effects had at least been considered in these MEMS microphone designs. Now, the second major class of effects are photoacoustic effects, which actually will affect the membrane. And this is where light actually generates a vibration on the membrane via many different types of mechanisms, but the main ones that we are considering are the thermal piston model, where lasers hit the membrane and heat up the air very close to the membrane, which causes an expansion of air in a pressure wave. Or we're also looking at uh, thermoelastic waves and bending, which are the uh, thermal expansion of the membrane that are caused by the laser hitting uh, the membrane and heating it up. So now we know that what effects can be present, we need to define ways to isolate these two effects. So our experimental methodology was first to develop an experimental setup that was precise and allowed control over many different variables in the attack. And then we selected variables where photoacoustics and photoelectricity would have different responses. And the three I'm going to talk about today are the frequency of the signal modulation being injected, the color of the injected laser, and the pressure of the air surrounding the microphone. So here is the experimental setup that we developed. Using some optical equipment, we made a setup to have very fine control over the aiming and focusing of the laser. We did this with an objective lens and a half silvered mirror so that we could both look at, um, we could look at what we were firing at as we were shooting the laser. Beyond this, we used a function generator and a very precise laser driver in order to be able to craft whatever modulated light signal that we wanted for the experiment. And we used an oscilloscope and an optical power meter in order to um, measure the response of the microphone, as well as calibrate the laser power um, very precisely. And finally, we put the target microphones within a vacuum chamber with clear acrylic walls in order to test the effects of air pressure. Now we selected four different target microphones to perform our experiments. 
Three of them are capacitive sensing microphones, where vibrations cause a change in capacitance between a diaphragm and a backplate. Two of these only have a single diaphragm backplate pair, while the SPA has two diaphragm backplate pairs with differential measurements. Finally, the last microphone is piezoresistive, where vi vibrations cause changes in resistance on the piezoresistors at the edge of the diaphragm. With this setup, our first variable to investigate was the frequency of the injected light signal. Based on the theory behind the transduction mechanisms, photoacoustic effects should have a low frequency bias in the frequency response. This is because the primary mechanism in photo, these photoacoustic effects is thermal mechanisms, which have a very slow response in comparison to uh, the electrical effects. Photoelectric effects, on the other hand, should mainly just be affected by the analog circuitry that's present on the ASIC which are designed to have a fairly flat response in audio frequencies. So to check this, we actually depackaged the microphones to have better control at what we're firing at, and we could fire at the ASIC or the membrane directly. So here are the results from this experiment. So first off, notice that for three of the microphones, we see the predicted flat frequency response when firing directly at the ASIC. The final microphone doesn't ex exhibit this response, but as the ASIC is a black box to us, it is difficult to know exactly why. But something that all four microphones exhibit is a low frequency bias when firing at the membrane, which fits the prediction for the photoacoustic dominance. Beyond this, all four microphones exhibit a local maximum at the frequencies between 10 kilohertz and 30 kilohertz, where the membranes often have a mechanical resonance point, which indicates there is some vibration happening on the membrane. Finally, I wanna highlight the SPA with a dual capacitive microphones has a much lower output amplitude than any of the other microphones, and is much harder, harder to get line of sight on the membrane. And as you can see, this is what it looks like when viewing through the acoustic port. It's very difficult to get the laser lined up on the membrane. Now, the second variable that we investigated was the color of the injection laser. Based on the theory, blue light, with its shorter wavelengths and higher absorption coefficients in silicon, should produce a stronger photoacoustic effect, as more light is being absorbed and, and turned into heat. While red light, while more easily, uh, which one more easily penetrates this membrane, and two has more photons per unit optical power, um, should generate a higher photoelectric signal in the ASIC. So here are the results from the second experiment. In this case, the two single diaphragm capacitive microphones followed the predictions for the case when the photoacoustic effect is dominant, where blue light has the strongest response and red light has the weakest response. For the VM piezo-resistive microphone, all three colors have a very similar response. We hypothesize that this may be due to a thicker membrane that absorbs the majority of even red light. Finally, the dual diaphragm microphone has a very disorganized response, which seems to indicate some complex interaction, interaction of different effects that make it difficult to make conclusions from this experiment alone. The final variable we tested was the pressure of the air surrounding the microphone using a vacuum chamber. Vacuum chamber. According to the theory, photoacoustics should be greatly affected by changes in air pressure. This is because air is a primary factor for damping the motion of the membrane, as well as the primary component in the thermal piston model of the photoacoustics. Contrast this with the photoelectric effect, which should remain unaffected by any changes in air pressure. Here are the results of this experiment. Notice that all four microphones are significantly affected by air pressure, which indicates a dominance of the photoacoustic effect. As another observation, three of the microphones actually have a shift in signal amplitude once lower air pressures are reached, indicating the presence of multiple different photoacoustic mechanisms that are each affected by air pressure in different ways. So after seeing these results, the takeaway is that the light injection mechanism seems to be primarily caused by the photoacoustic effect. Because of this, future, de de future devices should be designed with consideration to the photoacoustic effect. In regards to defenses, we have three observations. First, the light blocking epoxy in the ASIC is not enough to prevent injection. Two, the low frequency bias can be used as a recognizable feature to detect attacks. And three, the most effective defense was, the, was a design that limited the line of sight to the membrane, which happened in the case of the SPA with the dual capacitive microphones. So in conclusion, photoacoustic effects are the primary transduction mechanisms that were exploited in light commands, but it's still unclear how the multiple potential photoacoustic mechanisms are interacting. 
Future work should be uh, include developing a physical model of the system to better understand the attacks and defenses. And as a final challenge, I wanted to encourage all of you to think of a potential ways that photoacoustics might be leveraged in future sensor designs as the effect of photoacoustics on MEMS devices seems underexplored. If you're interested to know more, here are some related works. The top section shows a list of some laser fault injection attacks that often exploit the photoelectric effect. While the bottom section shows some of the papers investing photoacoustics in developing physical models for them. Thank you for your attention. And you can always visit our website to learn more about the attack or email me if you for any further questions that you may have. Thank you very much.